In this episode of Motive Garage presented by Spares Box, Jet 200 is back and we start getting ready for World Time Attack 2023. Now, if you're a long-time viewer of our channel and you follow Jet 200, you'll know that after last year's World Time Attack, the car has done basically, well, nothing. And why is that? Well, to get ready for this year, we needed to secure a few things. One of them was obviously some financial support from Spares Box, which is a big thank you to them, because obviously racing at World Time Attack has gotten into a very expensive territory. Uh, the second thing we needed to organise was just a couple of key parts from some suppliers who were working on some new bits that we could test out on the car. So with all of that together, we're now ready to get ready for World Time Attack Challenge. However, we also got held up by, well, just being super busy. As you know, we've been to America twice this year. We've had Hoonigan here, TRC here. We um, had Drag Battle GDR Challenge and we had GTR Festival all back to back. So now it's finally time to get this car ready. Now, if you watched our coverage from 2022 with Jet 200, you know that we had three main fundamental issues. Firstly, was the reliability of the electrical system, sensors and wiring. Uh, the second one is that we had issues with the front end trying to tear itself off because the car was much faster. And the third one was oil pressure issues. Uh, essentially big RPM from the VE head combined with some really high cornering speeds because of the aero and new suspension development meant that the wet sump uh, with an accumulator just can't do the job anymore. So they're the three things that we need to fix. So let's have a look at them in detail and work out what we're gonna do. So a major problem that we had last year that put us out for pretty much all of day two was an electrical issue. Uh, why did we have an electrical issue? Well, this car first got wired in 2011 and it still has a Howtech Sport 1000. It. The ECU still works fine, um, but it's the wiring that's just over time has deteriorated, pulling engines in and out, gearboxes in and out, uh, rewiring different sections for different things, the VE conversion. Uh, we pretty much lost all of day two chasing electrical issues. Here's the thing about wiring. Once it starts to degrade over time, sometimes it can be really difficult to diagnose the exact issue and find it in the wiring room. Now, like I said, this car got wired in 2011. It actually turned key for the first time on my 30th birthday, 12 years ago. And as you can imagine, time and motorsport are pretty harsh to the wiring in the car. So we've decided that basically we're gonna tear all of the wiring out of Jet 200, every last bit of it, and start again. And what are we gonna to use to start again? Well, we're gonna use this, the Howtech Nexus R5. Now, they don't call it an ECU, they call it a VCU, a Vehicle Control Unit. Why is that? Well, it isn't just an ECU in here. It has a full PDM, so you can control the entire body loom of all the cars. So things like lights and wipers, brake lights, etc. You can now do it all through this instead of having a separate PDM, which makes wiring a lot better. Uh, has a data logger inside and wideband control. So the big difference you'll notice with this car by having a Nexus R5 is it'll tidy a lot of the wiring up. The car right now has a whole bunch of silver boxes next to that Sport 1000. Expander boxes and wide bands and thermocouples and all that stuff. We can minimise the amount of boxes and wiring in the car now by switching to the Nexus R5. We could sit here for half an hour and tell you all the features of the Nexus, uh, but we know that the guys at Howtech have an awesome YouTube channel with plenty of videos running through all the features of the Nexus R5, but essentially, that's the pinnacle of what Howtech has to offer at the moment, and that's what's gonna go in Jet 200. We have the universal wiring loom, which you can see is pretty uh, hectic. <laughs> we'll trim back what we don't need out of it and use that to build a whole new loom for the car with the guys at Red Sun, and obviously the new Howtech IC7 dash. Now, another big part of having the wiring redone in this car is also the sensors. So. We had a VE head conversion. We want to spin the thing past 9,000 RPM. So you want to have a really good signal for ignition timing. So Ross Performance have this, the crank angle sensor and cam angle sensor kit, which is part of their dry sump kit that we're going to talk about soon. So we're going to be using these twin cherry sensors, one for the cam, which has this to get a signal and their balancer has the teeth on it so that we now get a crank angle and cam angle sensor to go to the ECU. So it'll be a much cleaner signal, which means the car will be more reliable, better to tune at high RPM. So this is gonna be a very big part of making Jet 200 more reliable, so we can spin more laps. Because we'll be honest with you, last year, we only really got one fire in. And if we had more, we know we could have gone faster. So it's gonna be a very important upgrade coming quite soon. So the aero package on this car has been chopped and changed over time and developed. 
uh, and it's just had a lot of wear and tear. But another big thing that happened last year was the extra speed from the extra power meant that we were hitting a top speed higher than we ever had before. And the front end was basically, well, trying to tear itself apart. The rad support started to twist. We saw a crack in the bottom uh, of the chassis rail at the front. So Chris from CS Engineering is gonna be fabricating some new tube uh, bodywork in the front for the rad support. Um, we're gonna get a new front bumper from Corporal Industries. We're gonna get a new uh, gu air guide into the radiator. Uh, and we're just gonna tidy a few things up in here as well. There are a few other serviceable items in the car that we wanna change as well. Like we wanna get rid of the uh, silicon hose and go to a proper clamp. We won't need a catch can anymore in the engine bay due to the dry sump. We're gonna upgrade to a more modern injector, a newer model of fuel pressure regulator. So there's a few things that we learnt racing at last year that we wanna do to tidy up in the engine bay and make it better to work on and more reliable. So uh, we'll be doing that with Chris from CS Engineering as well as Matt from Red Sun. So there's a fair bit to do in here, but um, yeah, all pretty straightforward. Now, many of our viewers would know that if you wanna build a serious race car or even really powerful street car, you should skip all the drama and go straight to a dry sump. Now, why don't people go straight to dry sump normally? And especially us with this car, usually it's just cost. So this car started off wet sump with an enlarged sump, then I added an accumulator and it was a good band-aid for quite a while. Um, but now we've just reached the point where the cornering speed, the braking force, and even the acceleration and high RPM all combined means we're getting oil surge in Jet 200 again. And the only way to fix that is to go dry sump. Uh, essentially what's happening is the cornering speed is high enough that the oil uh, sloshes to one side in the sump, and then basically the pump grabs some air and you get oil surge. Now we have an accumulator in Jet 200 like I said, great Band-Aid, but now the car has just gotten too serious, too powerful and too fast for a wet sump and a accumulator to do the job anymore. So we have switched to a dry sump kit. Uh, this is the one from Ross Performance for the SR20. Very comprehensive kit, as you can see laid out here. It comes with the sump that you need because you need a different sump when you go dry sump. Uh, it has three ports on one side and three on the other. So basically you can have your pump on either side. Uh, and you can see inside here, they've got a mesh screen uh, on each outlet. And then basically these three tubes that are run through here is where the oil gets sucked back in and into the pump. So that's the next bit to talk about. We have the Aviad pump, it's a four stage pump. So we get three stages uh, that suck out of the sump. And then you get one stage that basically draws from the tank uh, and back into the engine. So that's why it's a four stage pump. So what else does it come with? It comes with this bracket to mount it. So it comes with these mounting bracket shims so you can get the alignment correct and also comes with different springs so you can have different oil pressure. Why would you need different oil pressure, you ask? Well, depends on whether you've got a DET or a VET head on the car. The VE head uh, uses a solenoid with oil pressure to switch over to the different cam lobe. Uh, as you know, with anyone knows anything about Honda VTEC, this is Nissan's version of it. So you need more oil pressure to do that switch over and then sustain oil pressure at really high RPM in this thing. Uh, what else does it come with? You then get the new Ross Performance Balancer. As you can see here, the Race Series Balancer. Um, it also comes with teeth on it so that you can have a crank angle sensor. Obviously you get the belt. Uh, this is the adapter that goes onto the balancer with a belt guide to stop it from coming off. Uh, you get the oil sandwich plate. Now, basically this is exactly the same as what we have on the car, but instead of it going out to a filter and oil cooler and then back into the engine, because you have an external oil pump with a dry sump, you block that off completely and you just have oil coming in. Um, you can see here we have the two cherry sensors, one for the cam, one for the crank. We have all of our little brackets here that hold those sensors. And then we have a new little key way that goes onto the cam and that gives us our signal for the cam. So by having a crank and cam sensor, now we're gonna get a much cleaner signal to the ECU. Uh, pump also comes with a pulley, which has a little uh, belt guide either side so the belt doesn't come off and you lose oil pressure. And obviously one of the most important things is you get the tank for the dry sump system. So how does a dry sump system work? Well, we have a pretty comprehensive video on our channel that you can watch to learn exactly how a dry sump works and all of the benefits. But a very quick rundown is this. The oil pump now sits external to the engine. Uh, one benefit of that is when you've got a crank spinning an oil pump, oil pumps can break, they can crack, fracture, etc. Is a problem in SRs as well as RBs. 
Um, and obviously you get a much bigger and much stronger oil pump as well that is serviceable uh, and is external to the car. Now, basically what a dry sump does is rather than oil just drop into the sump and it gets sucked out by the oil pump, basically this dry sump pump is trying to suck the oil, oil vapor, everything out of the inside of the engine. One little benefit of that is it tries to create vacuum inside the block, which can actually help you make more power um, and also means you don't have breathers breathing out of the top of the engine. You can actually suck everything through this and into this tank, and then you have a breather come off the tank. Now, when it sucks the oil and goes into the tank, the tank, if you look inside it, uh, it's basically designed to try and separate the air and the oil. The air will try and breathe out the top to a catch can that you'll probably have in the back of the car, and then the oil drops into the bottom, and then basically this pump, one of the stages will suck the oil out of here through the pump and then it pushes through an oil filter and oil cooler and back into the engine like a traditional oil system. So the dry sump is designed to stop oil surge because you've always got fresh oil in the bottom of the tank ready to go. You can get some vacuum inside your engine to help make more power. Um, and it's also more reliable than a pump that is driven by the crankshaft. So there are a lot of reasons to go dry sump but that's why dry sump is pretty much in every motorsport orientated car and so many supercars is the oil surge problem that it fixes. So we're gonna take the car over to Chris at CS Engineering. We're gonna mount the tank up first. Uh, and then basically once the tank is mounted up and Chris has looked over the car, we'll bring the car back here. We're gonna strip everything out of it because there's quite a few bits in the engine bay that need to be powder coated or tidied up, etc. Um, and then basically we'll get the dry sump kit installed, get it back in the car and get racing again. Sounds simple, right? Yeah, we know there's a lot of work. Let's go. Hello, Chris. What are you doing? <laughs> Drilling holes in my car. Again. Again? Yeah. You drilled a lot of holes in this car, Chris. Oh, I've done a lot of horrible stuff to this car. You've also welded a lot of things up, too. It's definitely not, uh... It's definitely nowhere near standard anymore. <laughs> you know, it's a it's 20, really, it's it's, 20th anniversary this it's year. It's really this sad, car. too, because these things are fetching so much money. And, um, back when we did this, originally, the shell was probably worth four thousand dollars like as a complete car don't That's exaggerate yeah, well, <laughs> two grand um, two grand roller but basically yeah so now the shells are you know forty thousand dollars for a neat Stupid one a day, so. who cares right i'm not oh, did what i wanted to do with it so there's definitely uh no loss there I, 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 i'd tell the viewers what version this is but i don't know anymore uh, a lot you were there oh, yeah. for version three four four point one four point seven blood, blood, blood sweat and gears we're talking about it, and then I was like, oh, we should put a cage in it. And then that, that, you know, just we went from half cage to let's do this, let's do that. And then the next minute we're like, Stitch hey, welded and everything. yeah, let's, um, years years after that, we're like, let's do World Time Attack. And then the whole Andrew Brilliant thing happened and then signed up for a million hours of work. <laughs> um, version four. Just was like, yeah, let's do it, which was really successful. But now it's like version 4.4 4 or something. Oh, it's pretty much done what, everything that we've wanted it to do but just getting old yeah it's getting just old te technology wise and there's easier and lighter ways to do things these days than what we're used to hey the chassis is still intact yeah. this bit's still totally fine all yeah. right uh, just like our core flute door trims yeah definitely have to redo them <laughs> we did those what 10 minutes yeah but, uh, that took us 10 minutes good branding good Bit branding tape wall yeah all right, so our plan is we've moved this out of the way. We're gonna remove the accumulator. We're gonna put the dry sump tank here and get that all fitted up so we can do the plumbing. We might have to move this, remount this, and that's it for what we're gonna do first. We mounted the oil can for the dry sump. Uh, we put it through the floor just to get it down a little bit lower. Uh, made a custom mount for that and relocated the power steering to in front and down low again just to try and get everything down low. So um, the obviously end. the cut is going away from here to get a whole bunch of other shit done. Yep. When, when it's, what condition does it need to be when you get it back and what have you got left to do? Um, so basically it's going away now. The engine's being pulled. Uh, the dry sump, actual dry sump sump itself is going to get fit. Uh, it's going to get plumbed and then brought back complete weight. So then we can attach the splitter 
uh, re possibly redo the front bar as well, uh, make a new splitter bracket, and we might do some uh, type of filling under the side skirts uh, to revise what we've done years ago. Uh, and possibly wait, uh, we'll definitely raise the wing. Uh, now in our class we can, uh, when we did this wing, uh, we did it exactly to the millimetre to what we could get away with. Uh, we will be raising it now, cause, only because we can. We actually could have raised it last year, but didn't because everyone was busy, uh, myself included, so nobody had any time and we kind of like just rock up there and race. But um, yeah, this year definitely have a little bit of time before World Time Attack and actually do a little bit of maintenance on the structure of the car as well. So it's copped a bit of a hide in the last few years. So. And that's it? Yeah, good job. <laughs>